I'm Steven O'Craig. I'm Lee A. I. E. And this is the first episode of A The Movie, Movie View, View Show. Show. Yay! We're wearing our work uniforms to show that we're both cashiers at Walmart. We plan on doing a different episode each week, but due to conflicting work schedules, we may have to skip some weeks. Okay. As most of you have probably figured out from the title of the show, this is about a show about reviewing movies. Specifically, Stephen and I will go to our local movie theater, Red Wing Cinema 8, in Red Wing, Minnesota. We'll watch a movie, and then we will review it. We're using a popcorn rating system, 1 to 10 popcorn. 1 popcorn being the worst, and 10 popcorn being the best. Since this is our very first show, we decided we're going to do a super movie, and that movie is called... Captain Marvel! This is the trailer. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. Never occurred to me that one might come from above. Space invasion. Big car chase. Truth be told, I was ready to hang it up till I met you today. So you're not from around here. It's hard to explain. I keep having these memories. I see flashes. I think I had a life here. But I can't tell if it's real. We have no idea what threats are out there. We can't do this alone. We need you. I'm not what you think I am. Okay, this is exciting. This is our first review, and it's for the movie Captain Marvel. So, the first thing I'd like to say is, before watching this movie today, and seeing the trailers before the movie, I knew nothing about Captain Marvel. I uh, assumed she was connected with Marvel, because her name is Marvel, so... Um, um, but, other than that, I kind of thought maybe she was going to possibly be, like, the Marvel version of Superman, because her name is Captain Marvel, but other than that, I didn't know anything about her. Oh yeah, same here. That's both based on my knowledge. So I, uh, I mean, Captain Marvel sounds like it should be a male, but after seeing this movie, you know, I have no problem with a, a female doing it. But yeah, I, oh. I can't came out like Steven, pretty much, not quite clueless, but you know, with an open mind, put it that way. Um, I'm gonna say, well, let's start at the beginning. Uh, the intro was kind of cool, because, like, when they showed the Marvel logo before the movie, uh, they showed a whole bunch of pictures of Stan Lee, and I, I, I thought that was really yep. cool. Oh, that yep. was cool. Yep. So, so, the Marvel logo wasn't the same. I don't know if they're going to keep doing it that way, but that's the way they did it for this movie, and I thought that was a good homage towards Stan Lee. Sure. Definitely well deserved. Um, the special effects? I gave it a 10, actually. I don't see how they could have... Did anything better than they did. Special effects were awesome. They were amazing. I love the music. Yeah. Music was especially cool. that I'm Just a Girl was especially appropriate. The soundtrack, if you're into grunge, excellent, excellent. I was so surprised. They play Nirvana's, I think it was Come As You Are. I, was, oh, yeah. I thought that was awesome because you, you don't hear much Nirvana in, in movies. Maybe like in Moulin Rouge is like the only other movie to feel worse. I actually heard a uh, Nirvana actually, song. Actually, back in with uh, the... Uh, 
the blockbuster video vibe too. That's yeah, blockbuster video, and this is like I confused at this point. There's a point in the movie where she crashed into a building, and then they show the building as blockbuster video. I'm like, what? I, at first, I thought they made some sort of like mental mistake, like you know they put a blockbuster in, but then you realize it doesn't take place in today's time. It's I I would say it was like the early '90s it was supposed to be in. Actually, it's '95 because at one reference they say six years before in 1989. Oh, so it was okay. yeah, 19, right in the middle of that decade. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, there's even a phone booth. Saw the phone booth. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. I, and, he, and he has a pager. Mm -hmm. It's kind of pre pre cell phones too, so it's kind of. I wasn't sure at first why they were putting it in a time period before a day, but I thought about it. I think they did that because the Avengers movie is like the big superhero movie right now. You know, I mean, it's like it made an impact all over the world. And if they had done it in this time period, they'd have to explain why, why she's doing all this stuff that isn't connected with the Avengers or that movie by doing it today. And I, th and I think that might be one of the reasons why they did it earlier. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, or they just want to show... Um, I don't know, like her beginning story, and they thought that would be the best time to do it. And I, I don't know. Yeah, it just says. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just I got I like the time period they show. There's some pretty funny references. I, I, I I'm not sure how I felt about the time period. I, I, I think maybe I would have liked it better in today's time period. Um, but they spent a lot of time in outer space, so yeah. I did not think it felt at the first beginning of the movie. I didn't think it felt like a superhero movie for like the first. Forty-five. That's what minutes. I liked about it. It's more of a science fiction. I mean, yes. Really, it's more like Star Wars. I mean, even when they're on Earth, that one scene where they're uh, the black woman's buzzing through that canyon, mm -hmm. reminded me of like Han Solo and William Falcon going through the an asteroid belt. So it's got a real outer space vibe to it. I, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I didn't get like a Star Wars vibe from it. Maybe a little more Star Trek, um, especially like the kind of like mask costume they had. You know. Oh, like, that part but, is yeah. Star Trek. Um, I'm just thinking, like, the uh, like flying through the canyon reminded me of, like, the Millennium Falcon oh. going through, you know, an like, asteroid belt or something oh, okay, like that. Okay, okay. Or even, like, the last Star Wars movie where they do some fancy flying. Okay. Yeah, I, that's I, why I have a Star Wars. Like I said, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just didn't really know, notice that. But, yeah, you know. there's different, different layers to it. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a group of aliens called the Kree. Now, I did actually know a little bit about the Kree before the movie, because if you play this, I've been playing this game called Marvel Strike Force on my cell phone, and they have the Kree in there as a character you can play as, oh, okay. but I really didn't know anything about them either, you know, other than what, they look, they're like blue or something like that. Um, well, there's it, North Kree and South Kree. Uh, <laughs> um, there was, um, I, I like the fact it was original. It was a very original superhero movie. I mean, it's like, I, you know, as a movie that wasn't a superhero movie, it, it was still pretty original. W would you agree? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like I say, the uh, special effects, like the City of Cree, and even the spaceships, mm -hmm. looked unique. It's like totally different from anything we've seen in Star Wars or Star Trek or any other, you know, um, science fiction movie. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um... It was cool when they showed Stan Lee on the train. I say, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean, you knew it was gonna happen sometime in the movie, right? And I, uh, oh, I love that part. How, how, how do you think they did that? Because he didn't look CG. He looked like it was really him. Yeah, they must have just. Um, it was it was perfectly done. I mean, it looked like Stan Lee, like really was in, on that train. It didn't look like he had been yeah, generated. Yeah, and I like the whole um, the shapeshifters. Villain thing, mm -hmm. especially appropriate for our times with, you know, terrorists posing as regular people. Oh, okay. so that's why I like the idea that the shape the shape shifters are the bad guys, and that was one of the things in the movie trying to figure out. Well, is this a person, a good, you know, a good guy or a bad guy? Okay. And then so that's just a sign of good writing. And so mm -hmm. at first you think the people that um, Captain Marvel is around are the good guys, but you find out. Oh, ooh. we won't tell too much, right? <laughs> well, anyway, something happens, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I like Samuel L. Jackson. I've always liked him as an actor. He's a really good actor. Uh, he plays Nick Fury. I, I don't think I gave too much away by saying he's in the movie, because if you watch the trailer, you can see that he's in there. 
uh, as Nick Fury. I, I, um, there's this cat situation that's in the movie. There's this cat they show a whole bunch of times. It, it was okay, but I don't know. I think they did too much, and it was also kind of corny. Oh. And, like, let's just say the cat and Nick Fury have something that happens in the movie, and I thought they could have done that in a better way. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you see it, you'll know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, oh, I like the friendship that she had with her friend um, when she, uh, on Earth. That was a pilot. The pilot the lady. Pilot. Yeah, I, I thought that was good. Uh, I liked her uniform at the end. Where she gets she gets her official uniform at the end of the movie. She gets a little daughter, little girl's uh, input on. Right. Uh, what it look like? It was uh, red, gold, and blue. It was pretty cool. Yep. Oh. Uh, as we said, the soundtrack's really good. Okay, we've reached the big moment. Uh, Lee and I are going to give our scores. Um, I want to give an honest score, but I also didn't want to be too harsh or too nitpicky. So the score I want to give the movie is an 8. How about you, Lee? I rate it slightly higher. Um, looking at my phone, notes on my phone, I had like a plot was 8 and the characters had a had them as a 9, and uh, cinematography, like, 9.5, theme was a 10. Um, but overall, uh, I'm going to give it an 8.5. That was very solid. I had no real, no real issues except the ending. I found implausible. But, uh, otherwise, it was a very good movie, though. Just not, not Oscar-nominated worthy, but definitely well worth your time to see. Our scores are pretty close. Yeah. yeah. 8.5. Yep. Okay, uh, next we're going to show our scores, and then we're going to go to uh, Rotten Tomatoes and also Metacritic and see how close uh, their scores are to ours. We're back and we're going to look up Rotten Tomatoes. Well, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 79%, and the audience score was 62%, so we we're pretty close to the uh, tomato meter score. Uh, I gave it an 8, you gave it an 8.5, that gave it a 79%, which would be an, almost an 8 out of 10. Oh, yeah. So, pretty, uh, pretty darn close. Pretty close. Okay, now we're going to look up Metacritic. Well, Metacritic gave it a 64, so they obviously didn't care for it as much as we did. Um, what do you think? Yeah, uh, 20, well, from my score, 85 is different to 21. It's rather, rather significant. Um, <clears throat> Whoa, the user score is 3.5. People oh, really wow. did not like it. <laughs> they got a lot of negative reviews. Uh, I mean, as when I mentioned, I mean, it wasn't the greatest movie ever, but I, I, I liked it. Yeah, I did. I, I liked that. So I enjoyed the movie. I just think it was better than... Yeah, 64 does seem low to me. I um, really is... 3.5 really? sounds super low to me. Yeah. yeah oh I mean, my god, yeah. That's, uh, I, don't, I don't see that at all. I mean, it wasn't like art, but I mean, it, it was a good movie. It was a good superhero movie. Oh, yeah. Fun, fast-paced, mm -hmm. nice mix of action sequences and uh, character development and then a couple of mysteries they're trying to solve. So, I don't know. Yeah, I just thought it was much higher than that. I'm a 64, but um, it's still positive. I mean, people didn't dislike the movie, obviously, on Metacritic, but um, they just didn't like as much as we did. Yeah, I'm surprised that it got 3.5, though. That's by the user score. Yeah. I thought people would have liked the movie more than that. But yeah, that is surprising. I guess it might have got an opinion, right? Yeah, that's right. True, true, true. Melt your butter. Okay. We're adding a session called Steven's Weekly Recommendation, and after that, we're going to do Lee's Joke of the Week. For Steven's weekly recommendation, I'm going to recommend something in each episode that, that I think is awesome. My recommendation this week is the show Gotham. This show, to me, is incredible. It's the story of Batman before he's Batman. But it's more than just that. It's the story of the villains before they were villains. The show is really, really cool. It's well-written, well-filmed, well-acted, and very imaginative. What do you think, Lee? Totally agree. You get the backstory of every villain in the Batman world. Plus, of course, um, Bruce Wayne slash Batman's backstory as well. But yeah, you get... Name a character in Batman's world and you'll, you'll find out how they got to be who they are. 
I think that the kid who plays the Joker in Gotham is really, really good. I would say he's the best since Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson and then this kid. I mean, talk about insane. His Joker is completely insane. And he, in a way, needs Bruce Wayne to give himself meaning in life. Otherwise, he'd just be some crazy guy for no reason. Exactly. Yep. Uh, yeah, I thought Jack Nicholson played the best Joker, but this actor is, I'd say, just as good. I mean, it's different because, you know, Jack Nicholson just did it for one movie, and this kid's doing it, you know, in the series. But, yeah, he plays the best insane villain I've ever seen. And uh, that's my rec recommendation, and here's the trailer now. James Gordon, what do we got? Male, female, gunshot. That kid saw the whole thing. My, my name is Bruce Wayne. Brooks, be strong. I promise you, I will find the man who did this. Detective James Gordon, ma'am. Well, aren't you a cool glass of milk? Mooney works for Falcone. Maybe Falcone wanted the Waynes killed. I know that you own the police. <laughs> you can't have organized crime without law and order. I'm gonna clean up the police department. Gotham is on a knife edge. I won't let it fall apart without a fight. Jim, this is very perilous stuff you're messing with. Forget about it. No. What kind of gun did you- uh, uh, uh. I want riddles, I'll read the funny pages. What's your name? Ivy. Take it easy, penguin. I don't like to be called that. There's a war coming. There will, there will be chaos. Rivers of blood in the street. You have a little danger in your eye. I wonder what you plan to do with that. You'll have to wait and see. We're back, and the final part of this episode is da -da -da, Lee's Joke of the Week. Okay, and because it's the first episode, and we're reviewing movies, this is going to be a movie-related joke. I have not heard this joke, have I? If you haven't, if you have, you're going to pretend you haven't. So. Okay, okay, I'll pretend I haven't. Okay, did you hear about the actor who fell through some floorboards? No. No big deal. Just going through a stage. Ha 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 I like that one. I've not heard that one before. <laughs> that's funny. Well, that's the end of our show. And uh, we really appreciate you all that watched today. And as we always end our show, we're going to say, we'll be watching for, for you. you.